when to stop mesh refinement this is where i was asking about i was telling you about the law of the wall model or basically your y plus value your y plus value needs to be within a certain range which means even if you refine your mesh too much it's wrong even if your mesh is too big that's wrong there is a sweet spot value that sweet spot is determined based upon the turbulence model you are using so make sure that you stop your mesh refinement once you are inside the sweet spot what turbulence model should you use no brainer you don't have to research this again k omega sst which is a lower nulls number turbulence model the, just from the name you know that it's right when your y plus is less than 1 you can use it it will give you excellent results that is like an industry standard model second is palo tolomos another industry standard model there are some drawback, drawbacks in both these models which i'll be talking about maybe in an advanced lecture if people are interested so on a scale of 1 to 10 please rate your understanding of the answers that i provided to the questions that i'm showing on screen and finally there is a sometimes a sweet spot in meshing meaning you should not go too refined or you should not go too uh, coarse that is a sweet spot and some practical turbulence models that you can use for external aerodynamics is spala talamars and uh, k omega sst if you kind of understood the answers that i provided to these questions so for example this is like a f1 wing geometry with a cool looking end plates that i picked up from grabcan right so you can see that the model seems to be split because it was actually attached to the entire f1 car so i just split the model from it So here the model is completely triangulated, meaning it uh, the entire geometry is represented as triangles. So this is not the mesh, okay? So what I did is I put it in a simple virtual wind tunnel, right? So the virtual wind tunnel looks like a box. If you ask me, is this box box correct? No, it's not. The reason why it's not correct is I'm just showing you how to set it up, right? It's just a demonstration. So you create a box like this. You need inflow and outflow, right? So these are the these are what you call as boundaries. so boundaries are nothing but faces in your model through which force will come through which the flow will come in and exit out as the flow comes in it's going to interact with the component that you have placed and <clears throat> what else can you do then you basically go through the case setup and i'm going to be talking about only the most important parameters so typically when you run you have the option of running a steady state or transient for external aerodynamics go with steady state that is going to give you the results the fastest time possible transient is required if your geometry is extremely complex and you are you are getting convergence issues and you don't know what to do about it then go for a steady uh, transient solver how far do you run the simulation well one of the things that people look at is the residuals but i say don't do that look at your drag coefficient value or your lift coefficient value they need to reach a converged value till it reaches convergence run the simulation then you have boundary conditions uh the exact boundary conditions i think we need to discuss that in a slightly advanced lecture but for now what we are basically going to do is i'm going to say that my my wing is a wall model is a wall geometry uh and my outside box that's also modeled as a wall ideally what i would do is i would basically do uh, set up set it up as a slip wall okay so that the velocity there so that there is no shear stress getting developed in those regions at the inflow what i'm doing is i'm providing a total pressure boundary condition and on for velocity i'm providing a neumann boundary condition meaning the derivative of velocity is zero what i can do is i can say that my pressure is zero gradient and i can specify a dirichlet condition for my velocity i can specify mass uh, specified i can specify the xyz components of velocity i can specify a mass flow rate the other other two options are not applicable in this case so <laughs> which boundary condition to choose well the answer is very simple you know the speed at which your car is traveling right that is the speed at which air should enter so what you can do is you can provide a velocity boundary condition and if you zoom into this model right and if i just you can see that velocity needs to go through minus x right if the velocity is going in minus x direction it is going to interact with wing so what i need to do is i need to basically in this case i can say that my x component of velocity is minus 55 meter per second the 55 meter per second is just a guess how would you do it you take the speed at which the car is traveling which is usually in kilometer per hour and you convert that into meter per second looks like there's a comment 
sir why aren't you operating the wing in ground effect like i said this is just a made up simulation right i can i can do whatever i want so since i am i'm just demonstrating the setup of a general uh, external flow case i'm not worrying about ground effect in fact what i'm doing here is i'm just treating this entire box as slip wall meaning the fluid is not going to stick to the wall at all right which is a very huge approximation but the whole idea is since i don't have wing data right i don't have any data in this case because i picked this geometry from grabcad this much should do i should not spend a lot of time researching and and basically figuring out how i should set up the model for ground effects especially if this is the first time i'm doing it because i don't have any data to compare against right i hope that makes sense jennifer then comes turbulence modeling okay see for tur turbulence modeling what is the model that i'm using rng k epsilon why even in this people use standard k epsilon and i'm using rng k epsilon is this correct no one doesn't depend on y plus <laughs> like i said k epsilon is a high reynolds number model right and it does not have terms for taking into account high pr uh, adverse pressure gradient which will always occur in external flows so in this case it's better to use k omega sst right i can use this but remember with k omega sst my grid needs to be highly refined i need to get up to y plus of 1 or if i'm using automatic wall function that is where i have a benefit in k omega sst it has something called as automatic wall function meaning even if your mesh is too refined it's not a problem right because the model is a lower and all number turbulence it's a lower and all number model so it can handle that and it has automatic wall functions meaning if your mesh is too coarse it would basically use the law of the wall model again if you don't understand what the law of the model is for this particular workshop you kind of have to just accept what i'm saying basically it is like you giving the answer it's a correlation which basically with which you are basically telling what the answer for velocity should be or you are telling what the velocity you are telling what is the answer for shear stress you are providing in the answer cfd is not doing it so what uh, when you use automatic wall functions what what is happening in the back end is um in cells that are actually outside the boundary layer it would actually see it would solve the cfd equations and for the cell that is actually closest to the wall it would apply the boundary condition based upon the y plus value if it is in if it is inside the uh, viscous sub layer or if it's inside the outer region it will apply the right boundary condition that is what you call as automatic wall function and you will also see k epsilon with the same automatic wall function but remember k epsilon with automatic wall function gets rid of the y plus value problem but it still has the problem of not capturing adverse pressure gradient meaning if of, if there is flow reversal it's not going to do a good job so let me close this and then after that you have your base grid and fixed embedding uh, in this case i'm using a cartesian mesh which is great for accuracy but for aerodynamics it's generally not uh, that much preferred in the industry right because you can create because in industry you need to create uh, for these type of situations you need to have at least 25 to 30 million cells for that cartesian meshes are not very very efficient they are very very accurate but they are not they are not very efficient right so for that people use like tetrahedral meshes along with prism layers to create body fitted meshes so in this case i'm just going to go with cartesian mesh because this is just for pure demonstration and then once i run the simulation right i this is kind of the results again i set this up literally 20 minutes before the presentation started so if we still have some results i'm looking at uh, para view here so what i've done is just like they would do in realistic wind tunnels i'm basically injecting some parts uh, uh, some tracers on one side of the wind uh, one side of the end plate so just a second guys and like couple of features you can see that that you observe in real f1 cars are getting captured you can see that how uh, vorticity is generated here and uh, the flow actually turns so that it directly does not interact with the wheels so one of the things is in f1 cars that people care about is your tires that are right behind yeah. if your uh, air is just going through going up going through the tires it's facing it right away that's very bad aerodynamics because your tires are not uh, aerodynamically efficient bodies so your end plate one of the jobs of your end plate is to also make sure that there's some amount of deviation 
it creates a deviation in the airflow so that your tires are not directly facing the air right again uh, the reason why we are not we are we are seeing that a little bit but in order to see that completely you need to model the entire f1 car which is something that we plan on doing anyway now when you see this i'm coloring this by velocity magnitude you can see that it's very very choppy the reason why this happens is because the mesh is the mesh quality is very very poor like i said since i had to run it in 20 minutes i just used a course simulation so let me see if i can enable a clip plane so there you go you can see that i have a clip plane and if i put enable this enable the mesh here you can see that the mesh is really really coarse uh, so let me add the mesh here and then color this guy by let me see if i have pressure and i'm just going to change my color map of the pressure really quickly and when i do that see one thing like i said pressure is something that you can create you can get very easily and just look at this you have higher pressure on the top and you have low pressure on the bottom right so that indicates what's the word that i'm looking for exactly right downforce the only thing is the value of downforce that i get might be wrong but qualitatively this result is great